Mr. Williams, thank you very much for your kind agreement to have this interview. So your term, your diplomatic term in Azerbaijan is coming to the end. That's why we would like to ask some questions. Uh, in your opinion, obviously, when you came to Azerbaijan and during the next four years, you could observe some changes in the relations between Azerbaijan and the European Union. So in your opinion, at the moment, how you can evaluate the relations between the European Union and Azerbaijan? and how the European Union delegation in Azerbaijan meets the expectation of people for which it works here. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much and thank you for interviewing me and it's a pleasure to uh, talk with you and it's been a pleasure also to go and visit some of the projects uh, that you have been doing uh, together with your organization last year. Thank you so much. Um, now when it comes to EU-Azerbaijan relations I think that at the moment it's uh, safe to say that these are very good. Um, as we are talking, we are discussing a new comprehensive agreement between the EU and Azerbaijan and I think it's high time because the old agreement stems from 1996, the Partnership and Cooperation Agreement, and both the EU and Azerbaijan have changed quite a bit uh, since uh, 22 years. Uh, this is really a different country than it was 22 years ago. It has developed uh, very strongly. And also the EU side uh, has developed and changed quite a bit and I think a new agreement that does justice to all these changes is very much called for. Now when people talk about EU-Azerbaijan relations they like to think that uh, it's primarily energy and it's true that we have a strategic energy partnership with Azerbaijan um, but for the EU Azerbaijan is much much more than just uh, energy and I would say energy is just one of many pillars of our relationship. We are the largest trade partner with and without uh, oil uh, between the EU and Azerbaijan. The EU of course is the largest economic bloc uh, in the world and therefore uh, an important trade partner, also important investor both in the oil sector, in the non-oil sector. Um, we have very strong cultural ties and cultural exchanges. Um, we are having uh, a lot of discussions and exchanges on things like security, uh, on things like cooperation. I think Azerbaijan is a uh, leading example of implementing twinning projects, bringing EU experience to the country. What is less well known is that Azerbaijan is also a leading country in TIEX projects. These are mini twinning projects, just one or two weeks having a civil servant from a member state here uh, to explain how things are done in the country. So I think um, it shows that EU-Azerbaijan relations are vibrant uh, and very much alive. Lastly, I think if you look at the political side, um, there have been quite frequent exchanges at the highest level between the EU and Azerbaijan. It was only this summer, a few months ago, that uh, your President Aliyev signed or initialed the new partnership priority, setting out what are the new uh, strategic directions for our uh, cooperation in the period 2018-2020. Um, so I would say uh, I'm confident that this is really a very robust uh, relationship. Yes, uh, thank you so much for such a precise and interesting answer. Uh, so when it comes to the work of European Union delegation in Azerbaijan, mm -hmm. how can you evaluate this work, how you can characterize the relations between the European Union delegation with the government mm -hmm. and obviously with civil society? Mm -hmm. Thank you, and I think that's also a very good question. Um, let me start by saying that um, the EU is the largest grant donor, both to government and to civil society. And I just mentioned about twinnings and TIEX, and that I think very much uh, exemplifies relations between EU and Azerbaijan when it comes to, to that. Uh, Azerbaijan, I think, benefits a lot and benefits very well from this possibility of bringing civil servants from member states to learn about how standards in Europe are, um, uh, are looking in real life and how they could be transformed into something that's useful in Baku. Um, so this is vibrant and alive. Civil society, I have to say the four years I've been here were for the civil society perspective not always the easiest. 
we have had some new legislative framework put in place that made it more difficult for everybody, including the EU, to work with civil society. And in 2014, when I arrived, we had a very strong uh, portfolio of civil society projects, and slowly we saw this number of projects going down. There were old projects that were slowly coming to an end, and there were no new projects being added. Especially in 2015. 2015 was a very, very difficult year. Since 2016, end of 2016, things are getting a bit better. I don't think we are there where we would like to be, but I'm happy to say that uh, at present, if I look at the portfolio of projects, there are um, not as many as I would like them to be, but there are project, new projects uh, financed by the EU, supporting civil society in important areas like education, like regional and rural development. And I hope that these projects are not only good projects in themselves, but will also allow uh, us to make a case to anyone who is not convinced yet that uh, civil society has a role to play. It's not about it should be done by government or it should be done by civil society. They can reach certain parts of population, vulnerable groups. That's very difficult to reach for any government to reach all vulnerable groups in all vulnerable populations. That goes as much for Sweden, the Netherlands, Belgium and France as it goes for Georgia, Ukraine and Azerbaijan. So I'm really hopeful that the results of this project can uh, lead to further increase of our portfolio. Yeah, so uh, when you first came here four years ago, as you already mentioned, obviously you had some ideas in your mind, like some maybe projects which you were planning to implement. So now when you finish your term in Azerbaijan, how you can say how much the expectation matches the reality? Mm -hmm. When I came to Azerbaijan, of course my first impression is um, very much, wow, what a beautiful country, what a beautiful city, and why as an EU delegation are we still providing assistance to this country? It's such a rich uh, country, uh, rich in terms of oil resources, but also rich in terms of many other aspects uh, of the country. And do we still have a role to play? I'm happy to say that three years, four years after, uh, the answer to that question is yes, very much, uh, because uh, EU experience, EU expertise, EU standards, there's a real hunger uh, for that, and I think Azerbaijan has benefited very well from uh, maybe financially not so much, but in technical terms, uh, a lot of what we had uh, to offer. And the same, I would say, goes also for things like uh, cultural exchanges, educational exchanges, um, for uh, bringing civil society ideas into the mainstream. Uh, these are all areas where we have uh, a positive role to play and where one and one is three. Maybe you could uh, remember any specific project or maybe number of projects which were initiated by you during mm -hmm. your term in Azerbaijan and which you will maybe remember as a good example for a long period of time. Yeah, one project I uh, I like all my projects to start <laughs> with. I really, I'm involved in each and every project uh, in the delegation. I stand behind it. I'm ready to defend it. I think we're doing some really good work in the country supporting economic diversification. If there's one thing I very much am proud of is uh, setting up the EU Azerbaijan uh, business forum uh, in the country. This is something that brings together people from government, uh, high-level people. This year we had uh, quite a few ministers, um, people from uh, from Azerbaijan, business people from Azerbaijan, uh, but also business people from Europe, both those that are already working in Azerbaijan and those that would be interested to better understand what it means to work in Azerbaijan and to talk on the basis of um, a survey we do every year asking those EU companies that already work in Azerbaijan, how, do, how is it to work in Azerbaijan? Is it difficult? Is it getting easier? Um, so on the basis of this survey, to talk about the business climate in Azerbaijan, I think is a magnificent thing to have done. And I'm really happy that we have outgrown. Uh, we started in ADA uh, in 2015, 
um, and already the hole was too small, we moved to the Marriott uh, and this year we had more than 700 participants and again the big, uh, big room in the Marriott was again too small and we had to do video streaming in a second room. It not only shows that there is increased interest for Azerbaijan by EU businesses, but also I think that we're doing, and I think we can sometimes say that, we're doing a good job. So uh, now you're leaving Azerbaijan after one week approximately, mm -hmm. so could you maybe tell us what next step in your career development? Are you going to continue doing something related with Azerbaijan? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, as I said already in eloquent Azerbaijani, my heart will always stay uh, with this uh, country. Thank and, you so much. Um, mm -hmm. That even is the case for my next professional assignment. I will be taking up duty early September in Brussels, but will still be dealing with this beautiful country as well as uh, some other countries in the Eastern Partnership. Um, dealing both with those countries and the bilateral assistance we do with these countries as well as the regional programs and I think that's also a very exciting element of work I haven't had the pleasure so much to do uh, because when you're working in a delegation the focus is very much on bilateral assistance what you do with Azerbaijan but I think the, the beauty of the Eastern Partnership is also this multilateral track and bringing those six Eastern Partnership countries together uh, allowing them to exchange experience about how they do certain things, creating an element of competition as well, why not? Um, but I think that is th this idea or this possibility of bringing different countries uh, together and, uh, and exchanging uh, about issues of common interest, I think this is very much the added value. Uh, both of the EU and of the Eastern Partnership and I look very much forward in my new capacity uh, to visit Baku, look with a different perspective to the same beautiful country and hope to meet the same beautiful people once again. Thank you so much. Your, your ideas and you should say that your heart is belong to Azerbaijan even when you're living. So in the end of this interview I would like to ask you maybe to tell something to our readers, to our viewers um, as wishes to mm -hmm. Azerbaijani people before you are living. Would you like to tell something? Sure. Um, what I would like to say to um, Azerbaijani people is first of all thank you very much uh, because I felt very welcome in your country and it is your country and I, no matter how long I stay here I remain a foreigner even if I try to master your beautiful language uh, from time to time. What I of course hope uh, and pray uh, is that uh, one day uh, this country would be able to uh, uh, have a, a situation where the main issue that is keeping some Eastern Partnership a bit apart will be resolved one way or the other in a way also that it's a win-win for all those that are concerned. Thank you so much for interesting interview and believe us you're in the heart of many citizens of Azerbaijan because by your interesting and really um, politics what you did so far in Azerbaijan, your activity, many people will remember you for a long time. So thank you very much and we wish you good luck. Thank you very much and you too, Yakshil. <laughs> thank you so much.